Hi BC, this is Aaron, Mitha Alamar, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite artists, Ronnie James Dio. Um, he's one of my favorite singers of all time, um, kind of one of, known as one of the very best metal singers of all time, of course, by most, most metal fans. And uh, I just love all his music, I love all the groups he was in, and while he was in them, um, um, his solo work is my favorite he's done, although I love his other stuff too. Um, but he was in quite a few different projects here, and I'm going to get started here. And um, t this is his first band, was Elf, and uh, he went by Ronald uh, Padovona, and he played bass at this time too. So he was actually a musician as well, not just a singer. And um, yeah, there's the back there, you can find him there. But yeah, he's just great, Ronnie James Dio. This is, Elf is not quite metal, it's kind of a boogie-woogie rock stuff a little bit of hard rock mixed in but his vocals you know it's ryan james deal singing so it's it's great and i also have the uh this other one i believe they had three albums i only have two i have uh carolina county ball as well i like this one a lot i think i like prefer this one to the other one but they're both good um you know it's good stuff good rock and then after elf um richie blackmore um formed a band after Deep Purple called Rainbow and got most of the bands for Elf for this first record here with him, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow and Ronnie James Dio of course on vocals but they take they took most of the Elf musicians for this record and um, you know this has got Man on the Silver Mountain, it's an all time classic a really good record, I love this album pretty cool uh, cover there let's see what label this is on, I think it's on Oyster or Poly, um, Polydor, Polydor, and uh, yeah, it's just amazing, you know, I'm one of my favorite singers and one of my favorite guitarists of all time, matching up together, and it's just, it was the start of a monstrous career. And then after uh, Rainbow Rising, they did this record, this amazing Rainbow Rising, I mean after uh, Richie Blackmore, they did Rainbow Rising, this is a great album, a lot of people think this is one of the best metal albums of all time. It's it's right up there. It's my second favorite Rainbow album. Um, there's the band there. And at this point, they had changed musicians and and got um, Tony Carey on the keyboards, Cozy Powell on the drums, Jimmy Bain on the bass. So they had switched it up a bit. And it's a great, great record. The song Stargazer is an all-time classic, of course. It's also got Terra Woman, you know, uh, A Light in the Black, and Starstruck, and it's just an amazing record. And um, so after that, they went and they did this double live record called Rainbow on Stage. Great live record. It's got Kill the King, Man on the Silver Mountain, uh, Blue, Starstruck, Catch the Rainbow, Mistreated, 16th Century Green, Green Sleeves, and Still I'm Sad. And it's an amazing, amazing double record. Great band. Killer lineup here. It's just an amazing record. That's what, that's what Oyster there. Um, yeah. It's just great, and um, let's see who was in it. Same the uh, same lineup, and then they get to my favorite Rainbow record, and this one here, they switched up the line bit of, lineup a bit. They added Bob Daisley on bass and David Stone on the keyboards, and came out with this, Long Live Rock and Roll, which um, is one of my favorite. This is my favorite Rainbow record, one of my favorite records of all time. I love this one. I mean, Rising's excellent, but this one here is the one I've always liked the best. The title song, Lady of the Lake. Gates of Babylon's my favorite Rainbow song. I love that. It's just so haunting, unique. And, uh, you know, it's got Kill the King, The Shed, Sensitive Delight. This is an amazing record. And there's the, uh, it's a gatefold. I also have a non-gatefold version. But, so at this point, this is the last album Ronnie James Dio did with Rainbow. And after that, he went and, um... Ozzy Osbourne was kicked out of Black Sabbath and they got Ronnie James Dio to go to Black Sabbath. And they came up with this masterpiece, Heaven and Hell. Amazing record. One of the all-time great metal records. It's just amazing. Um, you know, Neon Knights. It's, it's just so different than the Ozzy era. Just starting off with Neon Knights, you knew it was going to be different. The song Heaven and Hell is an epic classic. Um, Children of the Sea, Lady Evil. You know, every song is... A classic on this great lineup one of my very favorite black sabbath records i love this record but the next record they did i like even better <laughs> the mob rules and this one here is just 
it's all out, just in your face metal. I mean, there's some other stuff like a E5150, the instrumental is really cool. It's got like Turn Up, uh, Turn Up the Night, Voodoo, the title song, you know, Sign of the Southern Cross. Just amazing, amazing record. And, you know, it's just, it's Black Sabbath at their very height, I think. I mean, I love their Ozzy era, but this is my favorite Black Sabbath era. It's the Ronnie James Dio, which only went for two studio albums and then one later on. And then um, then after that, they put out Live Evil, of course. Great double live record. And it's got, you know, a mixture of the Dio and um, Ozzy era Sabbath songs. And, you know, the Ozzy era stuff sounds way different with Ronnie James singing, of course. I... Prefer those with Ozzy just because I'm used to them, but he's he's a much better singer. Ronnie James Dio is an all-time classic singer, of course. This is a really great live record. You know, it starts with E5150, Neon Nights, NIB, Children of the Sea, and Voodoo. I'll just show the title. There's so many. Instead of just reading them off there. Really good, really good album. Amazing, amazing stuff. And then... He did a solo career, which I'll get to, but then later on, he also did this record with Black Sabbath. One of the heaviest Black Sabbath records ever. This is a heavy, maybe the heaviest record that Ronnie James Dio ever did. Dehumanizer. Amazing record. I got the repress here with a bonus, uh, it's a double disc with bonus songs, which is cool. Computer God, you know, uh, Master of Insanity, Buried Alive. TV Crimes. It's just an amazing record. And it also has um, these, there's side three and four there, what's on there. Let's see if I can get the glare off it. Really cool stuff. And the vinyl's really cool on this too. I, I keep the uh, keep it in the shrink from the for the stickers there, so I've never actually seen the uh, inner gate fold, which is kind of sad. But they put it in these really nice, uh, I love these. These are my favorite sleeves. The black polyline sleeves are my favorite. And uh, there's the vinyl. Really nice looking custom labels. Sounds amazing. This is an amazing sounding record. It was a Rocktober release. I'm not sure what year, but it's an amazing record, of course. The Humanizer. One of my very favorite Black Sabbath records here, too. The three Dio ones are maybe my favorite, along with there's a couple others mixed in. And then we get to a solo career. This is my favorite Dio stuff. It's just all time classic stuff, of course, starting with Holy Diver. One of the all-time best records. Um, it's really hard to beat this record with any other record. It's so good. You know, Stand Up and Shout, Holy Diver, Gypsy, Caught in the Middle, Don't Talk to Strangers, just that first side alone. And then you get into the, you know, it's just amazing. Invisible, Shame on the Night, great stuff here. And these, for some reason, these Dio records, these original press Dio records, are amazing sounding. They just have such good sound quality. They blow right out of your speakers. Um, some of my best sounding records are the original pressings of that and this one here, The Last in Line. This one is equally as good as Holy Diver. I like it almost as well. It's just neck and neck for me because songs like Egypt, The Chains Are On, and Eat Your Heart Out, One Night in the City, Evil Eyes. Um, you know, then it's got the two big hits, We Rock and The Last in Line. Mystery was a, a single. That's probably my weakest song on it, but it's still really good. I mean, this is an, it's an amazing record too, Last in Line. Another amazing sounding record in my collection. These are two of my very best sounding records I have. They sound better than some audiophile records I have. And then next up, he did uh, this, this album, Sacred Heart. Solid record. It's not nearly as good as the first two, but it's a good solid record. It's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Sacred Heart. And King of Rock and Roll, that title song, Rock and Roll Children, Hungry for Heaven, Just Another Day, Shoot Shoot, all really good stuff. Great record. Um, it's probably, I think this is probably the weakest of his early solo releases, though, even though it's really good. And then after that, he did an EP, a live EP. I wish it would have been a double live. I mean, he had so much great, um, solo material. He could have done an amazing double live record, or even just a single, but he did an EP, but still cool, but it would have been nice to have, a, you know, and it's got a studio song. It's got King of Rock and Roll, Rock, Rainbow in the Dark, Sacred Heart. Time to Burn is the, the studio song, Rock and Roll Children, and We Rock. So, you know, it's really good. It's Dio Live, and he had a really good lineup. I mean, I forgot to even say he was in those first three records. He had, it was Ronnie James Dio. He had a Vinnie, uh, what was his name, uh, Vivian Campbell on the guitar. Um, 
amazing, amazing lineup. Uh, Vinny Apice on the drums, one of my favorite drummers. He's just great on that Dio, on these Dio records. And um, at this point, I believe he had Craig Goldie come in and join him, who's an amazing guitarist too. It's on the Vertigo. And this also has the, uh, where are they, there they are. This little, um, I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. Just because it's cool, it's Dio. This uh, postcard booklet that was in there. So, that's cool, it's good. I just wish it would have been a longer record because I like it so much. I love Dio. I saw him live on uh, the tour for a couple albums down there. I'll show it when it gets there. And then this record here, Dream Evil, amazing. I love this one too. It's almost as good as the first two. It's just, you know, Night People, Sunset Superman, could have been a dreamer and all the fools sell away were the singles they were the mellowest on here but they're really good you know uh faces in the window naked in the rain over love amazing amazing record love dio and this one has a really great sound too but the first two just are better for some reason sound wise and after that he put out this album lock up the wolves which i saw him on this tour he had ruin robertson on guitar he was a like a prodigy he was a teenager playing with all these older guys and they were really good live really good amazing and it was at a I saw it in uh, Salt Lake it, it was called the Salt Palace but, but they, they had it in a concert hall instead of the main arena because they didn't so it was a very small couple thousand people it was really cool got right up in front amazing record here too Evil on Queen Street you know night music between two hearts yeah wild one great great album too I love this one. Lock Up the Wolves, great record. And then after that, he changed his lineup a little more. I think he got Tracy G on the guitar, I believe, at this point. It's Strange Highways. This is a uh, repress. Um, really good record, too. Very underrated. Hollywood Black, Ev Evolution, Blood on a Stone, Jesus, Mary, and the Holy Ghost. That's a great song. But this is a really good record. And um, it's on this. Marbled purple vinyls, pretty cool. Sounds really good, excellent record. And then I'm missing a couple records of him. I don't have all of his later work, but I do have a couple more. Um, this one here, Angry Machines, is a great record on the lenticular cover, pretty cool. And uh, this is a really good record too. Hunter of the Heart, it's a really good. Double Monday, I love that one. You know, all of DL stuff, he's just such a good, you know, he writes the lyrics and melodies. I always wonder why I said that, but he was a bass player, so he wrote a lot of the music too, which is really cool. And this one's a gatefold with all the lyrics. And I believe it's just on black wax, let me check. Yeah, with the custom labels, but I love this record too. And then I have this, uh, I believe this is the last album he did, Killing the Dragon, another lenticular cover. Really great, this one blew me away. This is really heavy, really great record. Um, I love this one. Every song's good on it. He had a really good lineup, of course. He always had a great band. And then it's got the lyrics and the gatefold. I really love when they do that because it makes it bigger than when they put it just on the uh, inner sleeve. And there's the custom label. So that's all the records I have of uh, featuring Ronnie James Dio. I also have the CD, um, Stand Up and Shout, which is really cool. It's a double CD. It, goes, it has everything from Elf, Rainbow, Black Sabbath, and the Dio stuff. So it's got, you know, it's a really, got a, most of his career, but you know, it's, it has so many good songs, it leaves half of them off. Then I have, you know, the, the uh, Holy Diver cassette, Dream Evil cassette, I've had these forever. I used to have every single one of them on cassette too. I've lost most of my cassettes over the years. This one here is a Inferno, Last in Line, double live cassette, which is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, that's cool. So there's my Ronnie James Dio collection. You know, I, I wish I had more, but he's definitely one of my favorite singers ever. Um, an all-time legend. Too bad he passed. Uh, he's a, he's just, he was just great, great songwriter. I love the mysticism he put in the lyrics, and uh, he was really unique. And um, there we go. That's my uh, that's my Dio. Everybody, keep on rocking and have a good one.